In 1979, about seven years after Mercedes-Benz built the Galandwagen utility vehicle for the German army, they decided to put it into production for the public use. And since then, until now, it has been in production with very little changes. Now, I have been in this industry for the last eight years, reviewing and driving all sorts of cars. But ironically, I haven't been able to get my hands on a G-Wagon yet. Up until now. Finally, I'm behind the wheel of the Galanda wagon or the G wagon and quite frankly, I'm overwhelmed. It has stood the test of time and how. All these switches, this stick out display, this infotainment, these adjustable seats, they're all sort of bolted on to a piece of history. And it still manages to have this old school feel to it. Look at the wipers, look at the panel gaps in the doors. And even the way the doors close, that clunk, it has that nice old school feeling and somehow even in today's day and age, I like that feeling. Apart from the Unimog, the G-Wagon is the longest produced passenger car at Mercedes-Benz. In production for over 35 years now in a plant in Austria, the G has received quite a few facelifts over the years, the latest being the LEDs in the bumper. But what has remained largely unchanged is that classic boxy SUV design. The exposed hinges, the bumper mounted tail lights, the protruding wheel arches, it's all stuff of the 80s. The side mounted exhaust tips are the party piece and having one of these brutes breathing down your neck can be quite a scary sight. And yes, this old chap can keep up with you at some ridiculous speeds. Because after all, this isn't just any G-Wagon, this is an AMG. Because it wears those three letters, this is how the engine comes to life. That is the sound for 5.5 litre V8 bi-turbo petrol. And let me run you through some numbers. It puts out 545 PS of power, about 760 Newton meters of torque, 0 to 100 comes up in less than 6 seconds and the top speed is 210 km an hour restricted and that is coming from a vehicle that weighs over 2.5 tons now those aren't purely numbers they are bragging rights of course there are the other AMG SUVs as well like the GLs and the MLs and they also have tall power and top figures but then the sound of this vehicle and its form and its sheer shape and that old school character it's all like a match made in heaven the crackling sounds the growls they just sound a little too artificial on the gl or the ml and match so very well with the old school attitude or the old school form of this car there is a more manic v12 engine on offer as well a six liter mill that puts out 612 ps and a thousand newton meters of torque. You heard that right, 1000 Nm. That's ridiculous and still so tempting. They don't sell it to us though. Putting all that power and torque down to the road isn't all that easy unless of course you're on the autobahn, you have the expanse of the autobahn to your advantage. And even if you do, even changing lanes can be quite cumbersome. That is how heavy this car is. It makes its weight evident. Even braking, bringing this car to a halt from triple digit speeds, even with those AMG brakes, can be quite a task. The two live axles make their presence felt on the dynamic abilities of the G. You also get three lockable differentials should you decide to take her into tricky terrain. And you will be surprised at how good the G actually is. But there are some areas where its age catches up. The electronic power steering system is helpful. It's also very vague, very lifeless and there's also a certain degree of delay that it has. So you really need to plan your overtaking and your cornering manoeuvres very well. And by cornering I mean tackling bends. I'm not talking about going flat out through the corners. But if you do manage to go flat out, the tyres will complement you. The 275 section rubber has tremendous grip even when the rest of the body is reluctant to tackle the bends. 
that ladder frame construction of this vehicle, that old school suspension, it makes this vehicle so rigid that you can actually hear these clunks when I'm talking to you. You can hear the clunks. The mic is actually recording clunks from all over the car. That is the kind of old school feeling this vehicle has. It feels stable even at top speed, but the boxy shape tries to cut a square hole through the air, which doesn't exactly make it very aerodynamic. The big engine does help in fighting the wind and building up speed, but you can hear that fight as the wind noise becomes louder with speed. It isn't too disturbing, but the noise insulation certainly isn't in the league of the current Merc SUVs. The ideal way to drive this car then is in a calm and composed manner. Arrive slowly, let the onlookers absorb its attitude, its presence, its sheer size. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. His role isn't important anymore in today's Terminator sequence. It's his presence that makes all the difference. This car has a similar attitude. The G63 AMG in today's day and age seems a little pointless. It is not easy to drive as a Mercedes-Benz should be. It has all that power, but you can't put it down on the road. And it still manages to be one of the best-selling AMG models in India, and that had me baffled. But then I realized, when you have a poise and noise like that, you don't need those numbers to do the talking. It is a statement in itself, a very bold statement. Old, but not obsolete.